Welcome back to NC State Dendrology. I'm coming to you this afternoon from Fort Macon State Park, which is in Carteret County, North Carolina, I'm on the coast, so I'm the, on the Outer Bakes, and I'm on the Elliott Coos Trail, a great trail to hike in the wintertime um, because it does not have so many mosquitoes. And I'm here today to talk about um, the species that's a coastal plain species, um, Outer Banks, Barrier Island species, very common in Barrier Islands. This is Yopon or Yopon holly, Ilex vomitoria. So um, vomitoria gives a clue that maybe it's something that you wouldn't want to eat, but actually that's kind of an interesting um, part of its cultural history. So let's first talk about how you might identify this um, tree. So it's a smallish tree, doesn't get to be huge, um, but certainly can be as much as 30 feet tall. Um, I'm here on the first part of the maritime forest, it's very common here. But um, Ilex vomitoria is a great evergreen um, tree, and so it's getting planted pretty often, um, even as far west as the Piedmont. Um, it has these, right, so Ilex, we always tell our students that it has Ilex bark, right? So Ilex bark, holly bark is very nondescript, it is very pale gray, um, kind of distinctive in its undistinctiveness, but you can see how light gray that it is. And um, down here it can sometimes get some really cool lichens on it um, because that smooth bark is a good surface for it. The leaves are small and evergreen. Um, so certainly the sm probably the smallest holly leaves that we have in our flora. And they're evergreen. I can, um, I can fold one in half and you can hear it crunching, right? So it's a evergreen leaf. This is um, February, so it's got these nice shiny evergreen leaves. Another good feature, and I'm going to get a larger one so you can see it. Um, so it has a evenly crenate margin. So crenate margin, right? So it's kind of, yeah, let me get against my jacket. Yeah, so you can see these crenations. So they're rounded teeth. They're not pointed. And so those go all um, pretty much, not quite at the very base, but most of the leaf has these nice um, uh, it has a nice crenate margin, so many of these crenations along the margin. Um, they are very smooth, so you know I can feel them. They've got a little bit of a waxy feel, which probably protects them from salt spray. And all hollies are in the Aquifoliaceae family, so that's the holly family, and they are dioecious. Okay, so that means that the males and females are on separate individual plants. And so this one right here is a female plant. You can see it's got these beautiful, um, almost translucent red berries this time of year. Uh, the berries are um, considered to be fairly toxic. And the story about Ilex vomitoria is pretty interesting. So this is a plant that is our only native source of caffeine. Um, and so the leaves are quite high in caffeine and during colonial times, um, well actually before colonial times, this was widely used among Native Americans um, as the leaves would be roasted and then they would be steeped with water to make a ca hot caffeinated drink. Um, sometimes called the black drink and it was known even as far west as the Cherokee. So the Cherokee used Yopan um, holly as a, um, as a tea for various medicinal uses and so it was planted pretty far inland and also really valued. So colonists picked up on this and this became a very popular caffeinated hot drink in colonial America and actually it was taken back to England and that, that kind of raised the ire and concern of um, companies like the Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company and other, um, other trading companies for tea and so eventually um, it was then named, right, given its scientific name of Ilex vomitoria, which might imply that it's actually not a healthful drink at all. Um, when, you know, yes, you wouldn't eat the berries of of Yopan holly, but Yopan tea was perfectly fine, unless you probably consumed it in huge quantities. And so actually it became banned as, a, as an import. And so that was uh, definitely a little bit of capitalism at play, right? The, the folks who owned these big tea companies and traded in tea did not want to be usurped by this colonial drink that had become really popular. So it's kind of flown under the radar for many, many years. And um, now folks are kind of rediscovering Yopan tea. Um, you can definitely buy Yopan tea at the coast. And um, it's also, like I said, because it's an evergreen shrub and, and pretty tolerant of a lot, wide range of conditions, it's also uh, planted as a landscaping plant, definitely at the coast and also further inland as well. So you might see it in the Piedmont um, planted. So that's the story about 
Yopon Holly, or just Yopon, Ilex vomitoria, and this is NC State Dendrology.